So welcome everyone to this session. I'm Dehyuk Kim. I'm a senior researcher at Microsoft. So network intrusion detection systems or IDS are crucial components in, our, in any type of networks to identify malicious activities in the network. They typically require high precision, fast response and high performance, which are often hard to be achieved at the same time. In this talk, Zhao, who is a uh, PhD student at ISD in Lisbon, Portugal, will be talking about how to enable highly accurate and high performance IDS on programmable switches. Zhao, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Dehyuk. So, good afternoon. My name is João Romero Zamat. I am a PhD student at Instituto Superior Técnico, University of Lisbon. Today, I'm going to present an ongoing work towards in network anomaly detection. This is research being developed with my advisors, Fernando Ramos and Miguel Correia, and with the collaboration of Salvatore Signorello from Faculdade de Ciências, also at the University of Lisbon. As network environments continue to grow, network attacks also keep evolving in both scale and complexity. And existing solutions that target these threats, such as intrusion detection systems, often prove insufficient to combat them, in particular concerning previously unknown or zero-day attacks. As such, leveraging in-network detection is key for improving intrusion detection solutions. One class of intrusion detection that has been uh, widely explored in recent lit literature are anomaly-based systems. This class of intrusion detection is focused on detecting deviations from regular traffic profiles and has the ability to detect previously unknown attacks. Their detection process relies on classification methods with machine learning techniques being a common approach in recent implementations. However, these classification methods impose a heavier performance tax when compared with other classes of intrusion detection, such as misuse-based systems. And additionally, they are entirely dependent on the quality of the network measurements that they receive as input. The notion of software-defined networks has brought a change of paradigm in the networking field with the decoupling of the control and data planes. Additionally, the emergence of programmable switching hardware allows the ability to easily reprogram network hardware using, for instance, the P4 language. Nowadays, programmable switches are expected to perform more perform more than just regular packet forwarding. Many use cases are being explored on the data plane for performance and security reasons, from load balancing and scheduling to network telemetry solutions. As such, our question here is, how can we leverage these recent advances in network hardware and infrastructure to improve intrusion detection? Following this introduction, our contributions are, first, the design of Peregrine. Based on the Peregrine Falcon, which is known for its air diving speed. Our Peregrine is an in-network machine learning based anomaly detection framework, where a subset of the components in a traditional intrusion detection system are moved to the data plane level. Second, the, deca the data plane implementation itself, which targets the programmable switch architecture, the Intel Tofino. And third, a preliminary evaluation focusing on a measuring Peregrine's anomaly detection results and performing a comparison with a state-of-the-art anomaly detection solution. I'll now go over the, the overall design of Peregrine and describe some challenges we've encountered on the data plane implementation. The Peregrine framework moves part of the intrusion detection pipeline to the network data plane. Specifically, at the data plane level, we have two components. For each packet that arrives at the switch, we perform feature extraction to store and update a number of traffic counters. And we use these values to calculate almost 100 statistics to measure the network's traffic behavior. These measurements are periodically sent to the control plane in a proactive fashion, where Peregrine's controller then feeds them as input to a machine learning pipeline. A final anomaly score is then obtained for each particular set of measurements sent by the switch. So I'll now describe Peregrine's data, data plane design and implementation, starting by the feature extraction component. For each packet that arrives on the switch, we extract features pertaining to four flow keys, max source IP source, IP source, IP source IP destination, and five tuple. The specific counters updated for each flow key are the packet count, the packet length, and the squared packet length. 
These counters are stored in P4 registers so that they persist across multiple packets. From these counters, we are to calculate a range of different statistics, as shown in, on the table on the right. Across the four flow keys, these statistics aim to capture an overall snapshot of each host's behavior in the network with regards to bandwidth and packet rates. These statistics are of two types. The first, 1D statistics, is calculated for all four flow keys and depends on a single flow direction, which is the direction corresponding to the current packet. The second type, 2D statistics, is calculated only for the IP source, IP destination, and five double keys. These 2D statistics measure two flow directions as they encompass both inbound and outbound traffic. An additional consideration is that given the volatile nature of network traffic, it is beneficial to give recent statistics more weight than older values in the overall set. We achieve this through a decay factor, which is applied on the various counter values that we track before they are updated. The metric used to decide when to apply the decay factor is the difference between the arrival times of packets with matching flow keys across four time intervals, 100 milliseconds, one second, 10 seconds, and 60 seconds. We check only one time interval per packet due to resource constraints. The selected interval value alternates for each pipeline execution. Moving on to the target architecture constraints that we encountered during the implementation process. So first, for each packet, the Dofino architecture only allows access to a single position for each register. This limits the calculation of 2D statistics, which require counters for both flow directions, as we would have to access several registers twice in different positions to both update the current packet counters and read the counters for the other flow direction. Our solution in this case relies on a mechanism where the calculation of 2D statistics is performed every X packets or once per epoch, as we refer to it from now on. In this way, whenever the 2D statistics are to be calculated, the position to be accessed for each register can be changed to allow all the required values to be obtained. Another challenge is the lack of several mathematical operations which are, not, which are needed for the calculation of traffic statistics. For instance, we don't have access to precise divisions or floating point operations on the Tofino switch architecture. However, as an example, the formula for calculating the standard deviation shown here on the right requires divisions, a square and a square root. Well, in this case, our solution relies on performing calculations using approximations where needed, either by relying on Tofino math exter externs, for instance, to approximate squares and square roots, or through bit shifts for multiplications and divisions, in which the operators are rounded to the nearest lower power of two. A third challenge was the fact that due to the number and complexity of the operations performed, a single processing pipeline was insufficient. As the Tofino switch contains a fixed number of processing stages per pipeline. To overcome this limitation, we leverage a packet recirculation mechanism where a processed packet is sent to another pipeline in the switch, gaining access to additional stages for further processing. This recirculation process has a cost, so we only perform it at the end of each epoch when we calculate to these statistics, as the, these, the, the additional calculation operations required by these statistics require an, a higher number of stages. At the end of each recirculation process, we send the obtained set of statistics to the control plane. And so let us quickly go over the, the workflow for a pipeline execution with recirculation using a single statistic calculation, in this case, the magnitude, as an example. So when a packet arrives on the switch, it is parsed and sent to pipeline A ingress. We then update the counters and calculate the mean for the current flow, represented as I in this case. Afterwards, we read from stateful memory the stored mean value for the reverse flow represented as J. Subsequently, we recirculate the packet to pipeline B ingress with a custom header containing the calculated values. We deparse it and send it to the beginning of pipeline B, where after another parsing process, we now have access to more stages and are able to finish calculating the magnitude. Afterwards, the packet is sent back to pipeline A ingress, egress, 
and the final deparsing process will create a packet with a special custom header which contains all the obtained statistics. And these will be then sent to the controller. Moving on now to the control plane level. Peregrine's controller is responsible for managing the configuration and installing uh, flow rule, uh, table rules on the data plane switches. Now, packets containing statistics which are sent from the data plane are received by the controller, which extracts the statistics from the custom header and feeds them to the machine learning classification pipeline. This classification pipeline, the one that we use on Peregrine, is leveraged from Kitsune, a state-of-the-art intrusion detection system that achieved strong detection results using a relatively simple machine learning model. Specifically, it consists of a neural network of autoencoders, which receive the traffic measurements and output the final score for each set of measurements, the, the RMSC score. During the initial training phase of this ML pipeline, which consists only of benign traffic, the highest obtained score is considered a threshold value. And during the subsequent execution phase, any packet which obtains a score above that, th that threshold value is considered an anomaly as it deviates too much from what the classifier considers regular traffic behavior. So I'll now present some results from our preliminary evaluation. So our ongoing evaluation process is focused on three questions. The first is anomaly detection results. How do the measurements obtained by Peregrine perform as input to an anomaly detection classification pipeline when compared with Kitsunas? Second, what is the runtime performance that we can achieve with Peregrine on a programmable switch? And third, what is Peregrine's resource usage on a programmable switch? Regarding the experimental setup that we, that we have, we use network traces containing labeled attacks from two datasets, the Kitsune original evaluation dataset, which is obtained from an IoT infrastructure, and the CIC IDS dataset from 2017 which simulates a realistic network environment. The anomaly detection results, which will be shown in this presentation, were obtained from a control plane implementation, which simulates the statistics calculation process of the Tofino switch. And for the classification pipeline, we use the first million packets from each trace, which contain only benign traffic, to feed the training phase of the classification model. The remaining packets of each trace are then used as input to the train model in the execution phase. In terms of anomaly detection results, these two graphs show the results obtained from two scenarios that correspond to DOS SYN flood and SSL renegotiation attacks across various sampling rates or epoch values, which again specify the rate at which a particular packet's measurements are sent from the data plane to the control plane. The original Kitsune evaluated all packets without sampling, so its original result would be the first blue bar, Kitsune 1. But in our evaluation, we also performed experiments with sampling in our Kitsune executions for comparison's sake. The metric that we show here is the area under the curve, which is the probability that a classifier will rank a randomly chosen anomalous instance higher than a randomly chosen normal instance. A value of one, in this case, represents a perf perfect classifier for that particular data set, while a value of 0 0.5 represents a completely random classifier. Our evaluation shows that Peregrine's results with sampling closely match Kitsune's original results. Now, these graphs might, may seem counterintuitive at first, as they improve for higher sampling rates but this can be explained by the much smaller number of false positives that occurs as the sampling rate increases. Here, we have results for another metric, the equal error rate. Now, this metric measures the trade-off between the classifier's false negative rate and false positive rate, with its value representing the point at which both rates are the same. The lower the value, the more accurate the system. Our results for this metric also reveal that Peregrine's execution with sampling closely matches Kitsune's original results. The evaluation of Kitsune's runtime performance on a programmable switch is still ongoing work. I'd, like, I'd just like to highlight two points. The first is that Kitsune's implementation 
achieve the maximum processing rate across all components of 35,000 packets per second. By comparison, Peregrine's data plane implementation, data plane components, has been successfully compiled for the Tofino switch, which guarantees line rate performance on the data plane at terabit per second speeds. In terms of resource usage, Peregrine's resource usage on the Tofino switch is shown on this table, with the processing split between two pipelines. Let me refer once again that the second pipeline is used only once per epoch whenever we, we perform recirculation and calculate 2D traffic statistics. As our implementation work and the evaluation progresses, we hope to optimize the resource usage. We hope to optimize these values and the resource usage of Peregrine's components on the switch as much as possible. And so to summarize, we have presented the Peregrine framework, which leverages programmable networking hardware to move a subset of the components present in the traditional intrusion detection system to the network data plane. Specifically, Peregrine performs packet feature extraction and the calculation of traffic statistics entirely on the data plane. We have successfully compiled Peregrine for the Tofino native architecture, ensuring line rate performance. And we have performed a preliminary evaluation focusing on comparing anomaly detection results obtained by Peregrine with those of a state-of-the-art intrusion detection system, Kitsune, where we showed comparable results in terms of detection performance while scaling to around five orders of magnitude higher in terms of packet processing speed. To finish, in terms of both outgoing and on ongoing and future work, our next step is to complete our ongoing evaluation, in particular, focusing on performance measurements on the Tofino switch. In the future, our aim, our end goal, is to explore the complete implementation of an intrusion detection system in the network data plane, which will consist of adding also the classification pipeline itself, namely the machine learning components. These most likely, this most likely will occur in a simplified manner, where, for instance, the more expensive training phase of the classification model will con would continue to be performed in the control plane, but we would move the execution phase to the data plane. Thank you. All right, great. Thanks for your great talk. I think this is a really interesting approach uh, to leverage in the for computing for IDS with several clever ideas. I really like it. Thank so you. I have some questions um, regarding the, some of the details you mentioned. Yes. So if I understand correctly, it seems you address the architectural uh, constraints or limitation of switching chips, like Topino switching chips, yes. by leveraging existing math externs and some approximations. Exactly. So these, uh, yeah, these approaches um, only provide limited precision. I guess this approach could degrade the overall accuracy. So I was wondering uh, like if you get a chance to measure the accuracy, especially compared to the ground truth. Yes. So um, we haven't. Uh, that was a, that was an issue that we that we considered, and uh, when we perform a more uh, more complete evaluation, shall we say, um, we'll get a, be a better chance of measuring that. But so far, we, the results that we have obtained show that the approximations that we performed that we perform do not uh, do not um, degrade the, the results in terms of the, the results of the, of the classification process. But this might be this might be dependent on the on the data sets that we use, on the type of attacks that we classify, etc. But uh, yes, that is that is of course a, a concern in, in this type mm -hmm. of uh, in this type of process. Yeah, makes sense. So um, I think in the in one of your slides you mentioned you I mean that this system maintains inter packet arrival time per flow. Yes. So so I was wondering so that's a kind of per flow state. That's so exactly, I was wondering exactly. like a, yeah what's the maximum number of flow entries you could so, ah, ah yes, exactly so uh, at at this moment we we are maintaining um it's um. 8,182 uh, different different uh, different uh, time measurements. So for mm -hmm. we are able to maintain uh, 8,192 8, mm -hmm. sorry uh, mm -hmm. different flows. Mm -hmm. uh, 
this is a this is in terms of a of register size, of course. Mm -hmm. But these are, these these are our measurements that we we will tune up, and as obviously, if we reduce the 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 number of uh, of uh, of entries across all the four flow keys, mm -hmm. we we might we we might have a we end up with hash, hash collisions, and the, obviously the, the results worsened. So we have to to keep track of these uh, these two issues. So mm -hmm. we want to want to have as much precision as possible. We want to store as many flows as possible, mm -hmm. while also mm -hmm. taking taking uh, in consideration the memory limitations, etc., and the fact mm -hmm. that we have to maintain four flow keys. I see, makes sense. And does that mean um, so memory becomes a bottleneck, especially if you want to achieve like high precision? Yes, that I that see. is a that is a concern. I see. Makes it's sense. it's always a, a trade off. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And in the last slide, you, you mentioned that you plan to integrate other machine learning components in the data plane. So could you elaborate on this a little bit? Uh, because, um, so my, my just a general question is, do you think um, like um, um, implementing the entire machine learning components in the data plane is the really right approach? Or do we need to think about like a, a clever splitting uh, between the control and the data plane? Yes, uh, so <laughs> ideally, uh, mm. we would like very much to be able to to implement a complete uh, a complete classification pipeline on mm. the data plane, but mm. it might not be feasible at least with yeah. today's today's hardware. Mm. There was a there was a, a very interesting recent work called Taurus, uh, which mm. which uh, which uh, which at the hardware level implemented a a, a special module on the data plane. To, to integrate a machine learning component and it was an initial effort and we we, we want to to be able to leverage that to as we said uh, as i said in an initial stage at least uh, we're not expecting to perform training at the data plane level because training is very computationally expensive but the execution phase is much lighter in terms of resources so our hope is that even we, by, by optimizing as much as possible the other components, we might be able to to perform a bit of the class of the overall machine learning pipeline on the data plane level. Mm -hmm. Great, yeah. Thanks for your answer. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it of this session. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>